Hey there everybody, Eric from Art of Limitless coming at you today with another video. Today's video is on my 2017 backpacking gear loadout based upon the Kuyu Ultralight Hunting Icon Pro 7200 bag. Now this video today is not a review on this bag. If you have not seen it yet, please take a look back at my first impressions video on this bag. It's an excellent system. I'm really excited to use this. I've loaded it up and this is what I've come up with for a baseline kit uh, moving forward into 2017. And I'm just gonna share this with you today. Now just a couple other things worth noting before I get started. First is this bag has been set up uh, basically for what I'm gonna say late winter or early spring. Now I'm not a super experienced winter camper um, or hiker for that matter and so I don't intend on necessarily using this in the dead of winter. Uh, this setup for me has been pretty much developed to get me into the uh, eventual summer camping and backpacking season. So I anticipate having some late winter or early spring hikes that are still a little on the cold side and so that's why I've set this up the way that I have for this particular video. I do have some more appropriate uh, late spring and summer gear that I will eventually put in this and I'll do an update on that at that time. Additionally, if you've seen a couple of my prior videos and my gear loadouts for my backpacking, you'll notice that I was using an Osprey Atmos 65. At this point, I have swapped that bag out for this Icon Pro and I do anticipate this will be the bag that I use from here on out. This bag is loaded with features, it has all the organization that you need, yet at the same time, nice lightweight and an extremely comfortable carry system. And that's the main reason why I decided to go with this bag. Now, as I really start to get into this loadout, the first thing that you will see is that I do have some tools on the outside of the bag. Here I have my Grants Forest Brooks Small Forest Axe and also a Silky Gomtaro Fixed Blade Saw. You know, I tend to carry probably more tools than I need, but at the same time, I at least wanted to weigh my kit with the tools in here in the event that I do potentially need them or take them with me, depending on what I'm trying to do. And so here I have my ax and my saw, and then on the flip side, on my straps, I also have a large size camp knife. Here is my Benchmade Arvensis. And so I did want to weigh my kit with these tools on here just to see how it weighed in and what basically this was talking in terms of poundage. And so to give you the uh, understanding of what's in here as I weigh this up, first is you saw my tools. I have a full shelter. I have my sleep system, all my clothes, all my cooking, pretty much all my extra stuff, my first aid kit, the ability to make fire. I have everything in here short of my food and my water. So this to me is really my full fledged kit um, short of food and water. And so let's take a minute here and weigh this thing up. As I step on the scale here, fully clothed with my shoes on, 191.2. Now me, with the pack fully loaded, short of food and water. That's 224.8. Okay, and now removing the tools. Two twenty point six. Okay, so 33.6 with the tools, 29.4 without the tools. Now, in terms of the rest of the kit, I don't see too many areas where I think I could trim some weight. And if I was going to trim the weight, I'd be taking away my luxury items. You know, for me, I'm not looking for ultra lightweight. I'm looking for reasonably lightweight, the ability for me to carry my own load and what I decide is important to me, the distance I need to into the mountains, but more importantly, to enjoy my time out there. So for me, I really don't wanna cut back on too many of the luxury items, but let's make it through this pack and you'll see what I mean. 
So one of the main reasons why I chose this particular bag as my carry system is because of the overall organization. If you look at the outside of the bag, you'll see that there is ample compression straps to keep the bag nice and tight and tidy. The front exhibits a nice large pocket capable of holding plenty of items. For me, I plan on using this to hold my food. I think it's important, at least for me in the way that I like to organize my system to keep my food accessible so I don't need to dig through the rest of my gear while I'm out on the trail. Now moving on to some of the other sections of the bag. Basically this has a nice large head pack with two pockets. This again for me is another chance to put some of the most regularly accessed items that I want to get to while I'm out on the trail so I don't necessarily have to go digging through the rest of my contents. You'll notice that throughout most of this kit, anytime I had the option to go with a lightweight sill nylon pouch, I did. This particular year, I've tried to upgrade all my pouches and get away from some of that heavy duty nylon that some of these pouches have, just to try to reduce weight where I can. And so for that, you'll see that most of these pouches do end up being a sill nylon. Now the three things I have in this top head pack, Basically, this is just a lightweight pouch that has some fabrics. It has some headbands, bandanas, and some cloths that I can use basically to wash up, clean my face. Maybe I'll uh, come across a water source or a clean uh, running river and I wanna kinda clean up at the end of the day. It's something that allows me basically just to keep myself clean. Very lightweight, yet at the same time, lots of function. Moving forward, the next pouch has my water filtration system. This particular filtration system is the Survivor Filter Pro. This is what I've been using for the past couple of seasons. It's done very well for me and I do like it. It's slightly heavier, but at the same time, it has a great micron reduction. And so in that uh, particular case, I know I'm gonna get good quality, safe drinking water from my filter system. And in this final pouch, basically I just put my winter hat and winter gloves. I don't necessarily always wear them, but I did want to have them in here. I just put them in one of these pouches for the time being so that they wouldn't be loose inside this head pack. You know, I just felt as though to have these in a nice, neat, and tidy fashion in the top of the bag was advantageous. So even though I added a little bit of weight with this extra pouch and putting my winter gear in it, at the same time, I also gained the organization and a nice clean head pack. So moving on. This next pouch here, this is my first aid kit. Um, pretty much, this could sustain a number of people. I wanted it to be comprehensive enough to really be able to deal with most situations. Um, this has everything from all your bandages uh, to dressings. This has bug spray, it has sunscreen, different ointments, um, pretty much everything I need all the way to a tourniquet in the event that it was needed. So. This is a little bit on the large side. It's not incredibly heavy. Um, you know, these items don't weigh up to a whole lot, but they are a little bit on the bulky side. Again, in the same vein as these other pouches, I did go with a lightweight sill nylon pouch. This is an Osprey pack and uh, it's a nice organizer. And the ability for me to keep my gear in here, very organized, yet at the same time, still lightweight, even though it's a very robust system. The next little pouch I have in here is a Maxpedition pouch, basically full of different ways for me to make fire. I've reviewed some of these items in a prior video and I've made fire kits in the past. So if you're interested, you can take a look at one of those videos to see what you might find in say, for example, this Altoids tin. But just in this pouch alone, I have probably 15 plus different ways of making a fire. So depending on what scenario I find myself in, I know I'm gonna have what I need. And now finally, in the top of this pack, I do have my gloves. These are fire retardant gloves. I bring them with me all the time for two reasons. One is I'm able to handle very hot things with this. So for example, if I'm cooking and I wanna basically use these gloves to help me handle a hot pot of water if I'm boiling it I can wear these and it'll give me a little bit of ability to handle the pot without potentially getting burned and also if I had to do a long period of work I knew I had good quality uh, gear to put on my hands to keep my hands protected. Now continuing on this next pocket has some more of the essentials that I need to get to quickly on the outside of the bag. First and foremost is my sunglasses. 
depending on the you know scenario, depending on how bright it is. Um, I also have clear lenses in here in the event that it gets dark. So I do want this on the outside of the bag and the ability for me to get to it quite easily. The other thing is that I found this particular case is quite bulky. Um, it doesn't fit into too many bags easily. So where this pocket is a nice size, it fits in here very well. So that's a pretty nice feature and the ability for me to easily carry my glasses. Moving on, I just have a couple other little essentials. Basically, this is a rag that I have lathered in food grade grease. This allows me to keep my blades nice and greased, um, nice and uh, protected so that if I bring them out into the field and they have the potential to get wet, that they will at least be protected. I generally carry carbon steel, depending on what I'm doing. So to have this with me and the ability to protect my blades is definitely a must. In a similar fashion, maintaining my blade on the trail is important. I use a knife quite a bit while I'm out there. So to have a field sharpener is a good tool to have with me. Here I have my lights, basically a headlamp and also a flashlight, nice and charged up, fresh batteries ready to go.